Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Cut the Cord. Beloved family, our text says, On the day you were born, your cord was not cut, nor were you washed with water to make you clean, nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in cloths. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field, for on the day you were born you were despised. Then I passed by and saw you kicking about in your blood. And as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, Live. Ezekiel 16, 4-6 Wow, what a message from our Lord and King Jesus Christ. I saw you kicking about in your blood and I said to you, Live. Family, I need to compose myself right now so I can plant this seed my King gave me. But I want to give God praise. Praise be to the Lord and King. He saw us in a pool of our own blood and he declared to us, live. Glory, hallelujah. I receive that family. Cut the cord. These are the words spoken over each of us at birth. During pregnancy, the umbilical cord supplies nutrients and oxygen to the developing baby. The cord is sometimes called the baby's supply line because it carries the baby's blood back and forth between the baby and the placenta. It not only delivers necessary nutrients and oxygen to the baby, but it also removes the baby's waste products. After birth, the umbilical cord is no longer needed. So it's clamped and cut, which is painless because the cord has no nerves. This leaves behind a short cord stump which is supposed to fall off after three weeks. If the cord stump still hasn't separated after this time, this might be a sign of an underlying problem, such as an infection or immune system disorder. In our opening text this morning, God says to the prophet Ezekiel, Son of man, say to Jerusalem and her detestable practices, she was born in the land of Canaan to foreign mother and father. And when she was born from her mother, her umbilical cord wasn't cut. Every detestable practice remained connected by the cord. Family, this imagery is a powerful one. In the same book as our text this morning, God asks Ezekiel, what do you people mean by quoting this proverb about the land of Israel? The parents eat sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, you will no longer quote this Proverbs in Israel. For everyone belongs to me, the parent as well as the child. Both alike belong to me. The one who sins is the one who will die. Ezekiel 18, 2-4 Some of us have inherited the sins of our parents and have never cut the cord. Racism, hatred, fear, ignorance, unforgiveness, idolatry, and perversion are some of those things that we inherited and are still connected to. But God says all belong to me, the parents and the children. But if either repents and believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and King, he will not die, but have eternal life. So God says, I saw you kicking in your blood and I declare to you, live. How the sovereign Lord God cuts the cord of iniquity and washes the blood off the people, making them clean. When the child grows to adulthood, he prepares her in fine linen and adorned with precious jewelry to be the bride of Christ. But the woman or nation turns away from God to prostitution. Ezekiel 16 said, yet God still saves her, even though she rejects him for a life of prostituting with foreign gods. We see an amazing parallel story of how Hosea representing God is told to take Gomer as his wife and love her even though she lives a life of prostitution. And when Joshua spied of the land in Jericho, Rahab the prostitute hid them from the king who was seeking them out to kill them. 
And she says, save me and my family, because I know the Lord who delivered you from the land of Egypt has given you favor and possession of this land. So they answered her, if you tie this scarlet cord in your window, no harm should come to you or your family if you stay in the house. Rahab was told to cut the scarlet cord and tie it to the window. And when God delivers Jericho, she and her family will be saved. Glory be to God. The wise teacher Solomon says, we need to cut the cord. In Proverbs 5.22, he writes, The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them. The cords of their sins hold them fast. And finally, as the psalmist says in Psalm 129, So shall we declare family about the mercy and faithfulness of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, But the Lord is righteous. He has cut me free from the cords of the wicked. Much love.